This is Algebra 2 with Trig. We're talking about Chapter 13, 13.1. This is notes for Day 2 on 13.1. We're going to start with discussing what solving a right triangle means. You learn this in geometry, but it's important to understand what the terminology means when it says solve a right triangle. You need to calculate for the missing sides and angles. Remember that when finding sides, we use our trigonometric ratios. That's what we did in our previous lesson. When finding the angles, we use inverse of our trig ratios. That second inverse. And with your calculator, you want to be sure that it's in degree mode. So with your graphing calculator, you need to go to mode, which is above the 7, up near the, the, the top, and then down three rows to figure out radian or degree. So with our graphing calculator, Here's mode, it's above the 7, near the top. You would need to scroll down. Radian is one version, we'll learn about that some more later. And degree, you would hit enter to make it stay on degree. So we're going to solve triangle ABC. Notice that the, the format of all of our triangles are going to use C as a right angle. So if C is 20, I'm going to draw a separate triangle over here. If C is our right angle for this, it's not always true, but it is for all of these three questions. Side C is going to be the hypotenuse. Angle A and angle B Angle A is supposed to be 54 degrees, so I made A my larger of the two angles. Side A is going to be opposite that. Side B is going to be opposite angle B. So now we have to calculate what our missing sides are and missing angles. So to find the measurement of angle B, we could say that the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. So 90 minus 54 gives us 36. So that's the measurement of angle B. Now I know all three angles, 36, 54, and 90. Always remember the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. They add up to 90. Using the idea of SOKOTOA, that helps remind us what the trig functions are, I can now find an opposite side to angle A by using sine opposite over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always across from the 90. So sine of 54 is going to equal the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is 20. Put your trig over 1, cross multiply, so we get 20 times the sine of 54, which equals A. And then using your calculator, you can figure out that that is 16.18.
So now we know two sides. We know side C and side A. We now have to find side B. Notice that side B is next to the 54. It's a leg, and it's next to it, so it's called the adjacent side. So we're going to use the adjacent and the hypotenuse, which is cosine. Cosine of 54 equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Cross multiply, and we get 20 times the cosine of 54 equals B. And with our graphing calculator, we should be getting 11.76. So those are the three sides, 16.18, 11.76, and 20, and the three angles, 36, 54, and 90. Let's try that again. Angle A in this case is 32. Side B is called 10. We have to find out the other angle and the other two sides. Recall that the acute angles of a right triangle are always complementary. So 32 and what makes 90? So we subtract the 32 to get 58 degrees. And that gives us the measurement of angle B. Now if we want to find out the hypotenuse, B, the length of 10, is next to, so it's the adjacent, and of course across from the 90, 90 degrees is the hypotenuse, so adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. So cosine of 32 degrees equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Notice that the variable is on, on the bottom of the fraction, in the denominator. We place our trigonometry over 1, cross multiply, so C times the cosine of 32 equals 1 times 10, which is 10. Now this is where a lot of people make a mistake. They multiply, because we multiplied earlier, they multiply cosine of 32 with 10. But think about your algebra, you have to divide by the cosine of 32 to get C by itself. So that gives us a value of 11.79. So now we have all three angles and two of the sides. What's the side that we're now missing? Side A. So to find side A, side A is across from 32. Side A is the opposite side. So we're going to use opposite and adjacent. I suggest to use the numbers that they give you. Don't use a calculated value if you can help it because that helps you be sure that you're not making a mistake now if you mis made a mistake earlier or use rounded numbers. So opposite over adjacent is tangent. So tangent of 32 equals opposite over the adjacent. Cross multiply. 10 times the tangent of 32 equals the A. And side A is going to be 6.25. So now we know all three sides and all three angles. So we can take this triangle. You should uh, pause the video, try it on your own, log back on and see how you did. We would make our right triangle, 
Remember we talked about C. This is very important. C is the right angle. It doesn't matter what the other two would be. It looks like this one might be smaller, so let's call it the 19. This one looks a little bit bigger, so let's call it the other angle. So now we need to find angle A. We know what side C is. And we need to find side A and side B. Remember that side A is always across from A, and side B is always across from B. So 90 minus 19 gives us 71, and that's the measurement of angle A. To find A, which is the op, um, A is the adjacent side to the 19. It's the adjacent side, the 20. Side C is the hypotenuse. So again, we're going to use cosine of 19 to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Cross multiply. 20 times the cosine of 19 equals A. And using your calculator, you'll get 18.91. Now, for us to find our missing side of B, that is opposite the 19. So that's the opposite side, and we're going to use the hypotenuse. So sine of 19 equals opposite over the hypotenuse. Cross multiply. Using our calculator, 6.51 equals B. So we know all three sides, and now we know all three angles also.